Welcome to this week's podcast. I'm your host, Amelia. I'm a currently a 10th grader, my second year on FRC, and I've done two years on FTC. I'm in marketing and media department. Let's start off with you guys introducing yourselves. I'm Noah. I'm on my second year of FRC. I'm a junior, and, oh, and I also have uh, about three years on FTC. I'm Vincent. I'm also a junior, and this is also my second year on the team. Um, I'm working with the media marketing departments as well as chairmans. So let's jump right into Jumpstart here. Jumpstart is, for those of you who don't know, is basically a big training event that happens at SCSU and multiple other places around the state. But the one that we host and the one that we are in charge of like setting up is the St. Cloud State one. We are very proud for St. Cloud State, or we're very thankful for St. Cloud State to let us host there. It is a huge training event. This year we only had around 400, 500 people show up but it is a bunch of different rounds of different sessions involving different topics. They range from everywhere. Usually different teams will present for each different topic. We did have Andy Baker come in from Andy Mark this year. And we had Greg Needell, Needell from Rev, Robo- Rev Robotics come in this year, which was really amazing. And we thank them again for coming in. Um, it was very fun for me this year, definitely. Um, how did you guys like it? I loved it. I honestly, I went into it thinking that I wouldn't really get much out of it since there's only one session geared towards business. Um, but that one was, it was grant writing and it probably sounds really boring to you guys, as does my very monotone voice. Um, but I, I found it really interesting. Um, and I'm definitely going to look into writing grants, writing for grants now uh, for our team. And I think that will help us out a lot. Absolutely. Uh, Jumpstart for me was a really great experience. It was one of the first uh, like big training events that I'd been to with robotics. And the panels were really great. I learned a lot that I didn't think I was even going to be really interested in, but it was overall a great experience. We had some wonderful speakers there, including several from our team. And you, you did a um, leadership one, didn't you? It was, it was a fun, it was definitely a fun experience and I'm thankful for it. It's very, it's very intimidating to try and do it in front of new people but it's definitely worth the experience. It was an amazing experience. I'm thankful for the opportunity. I know Lucas and Greg from our team also did a CAD um, session and Maddie B did a FMEA Mm -hmm. presentation. From what I heard, I wasn't able to go to those, but from what I heard, they were amazing. All the other sessions that I've heard of were amazing. I haven't heard a bad review about a session (coughs) as of right now. Um, Other than that, it was overall a really fun time. I'm so excited to have Jumpstart again next year. I wish I saw Maddie B's. I bet it was really funny. I, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I forgot about that. Yeah, overall, Jumpstart was just really awesome. Favorite part? Honestly, the sessions were amazing, but just sitting at the table again with the team, with like the whole entire team, was just amazing talking. <laughs> it was just, it was just sitting with the team and just having talking, having fun. It was, it brought back what it feels like it's gonna be for the rest of the year. It's been, it's just been, it was a really fun time and I'm again excited to go back next year. Um, absolutely, Jumpstart for me was a really great experience. Um, one of my favorite parts was definitely the panels. Um, there was a really great one by Yoji Shimizu about uh, diversity and inclusion that was really, really fun to listen to and really eye-opening to listen to. So that was a great part. Uh, the lunches were delicious. What, what did you learn from that session? A lot about how even when you've uh, managed to incorporate um, underrepresented demographics within your team, there's a, there's a bias that um, can be difficult to overcome even when they're included in the team. And uh, because of that, it's really important to think about that when you're structuring your team and think about the way that those biases are being introduced. So that was a very uh, eye-opening experience for me, and I hope that we can use it to make lasting contributions to the team. So. I know our team is very focused on getting everyone equally, or trying to be as equal as possible. Our town isn't as diverse as many other towns, but we try as much to include everyone. We try to recruit as many people as possible, no matter their demographic, no matter religion, race, or anything. Um, how was your sessions? Um, I would definitely agree with what Vincent said. Uh, I liked I liked Yogi's uh, presentation a lot. Um, the one I I probably mentioned earlier was uh, it was grant writing. Um, I forget the name of who put it on and forget the number. I think it was UC Botics that he was from. He put on a really good presentation, um, and he had a he had an interesting flyer to hand out 
I just detailed. You write a letter to, you know, foundations or uh, companies asking for grants. And it, it, it does sound really boring how I'm explaining it, but I find it really interesting. No, yeah, grants are grants are very important for teams, especially when um, sponsorships are running a little bit dry like they are now. So, yeah. Back to kind of what you said with the diversity, who the man who led the diversity session, diversity and equality session, um, Yoji, he's actually coming to speak to us on Wednesday for a large group meeting on core values. I think all of us are pretty excited for him to come. He's... <laughs> what are the core values like? Core values? So have you guys been through core value training? Not a whole lot, no. I have not. So we have not. We missed the opportunity last year due to COVID to get core value training from him. But we, as all of us are really new to the team, but we're excited to learn, to hear what he says. I know we have a lot of new people, and so it'll be very nice to see what he brings up to the team and what new people take from it. Absolutely. That's a great thing to bring to the table for our team, especially with all the yeah, inexperienced members that are here. Amelia, I'm just honestly, how do you think our team is going to do this year? I honestly think we have really amazing potential. We have so many young kids. Um, we've been to so many off-season events where young people have been there. And um, I think our team has amazing potential this year, honestly. We're so young. We're we are. We don't have the experience of a major regional under our belts, but from what I've seen from off-season events, I think we could honestly pull through winning a regional this year without a doubt. Absolutely, I agree. We have a lot of um, great new talent on the team, and it's. it's I don't think it's going to be a challenge. Well, it will be a challenge, obviously, but I don't think. I think it's definitely something that we have the potential to do. No, I what do you agree. think our weakness is going to be? Our weakness would probably just be a lack of experience. Everyone is pretty new, um, even people who have been here. You know, even people who were here last year didn't really have much of a season. So there just isn't that season. There isn't that, um, there, there isn't that to rely on. I think, though, lack of experience, really. We have lack of experience of being working as a team as and in, like, the stressful regional, like, competitions and stuff. But we've had, we've been so lucky that the newbies or the new people that have come to the team have had so much knowledge. <laughs> They've come with like already, we don't have to train them in a lot of things, especially in media marketing. We have so many people who know how to do different things. So we're not relying on having one person have to reteach everything. Mm -hmm. They know so much already and they're so willing to teach each other that I think training this year will be yep. pretty simple. Yeah, Noah's had a lot, Noah has a lot to train his um, department because he's just getting a couple new people now, right? Yeah, I mean, I only have one person as far as business, and I kind of have to train myself in as well because a lot of this is new to me. Yep. Um, Vincent, what do you think our strength is going to be? Uh, strengths? Um, well, we've got um, a couple of new mentors coming in, and that's going to be a, a big help for us. We've got some new new resources and options for us. Uh, this new, um, well, not new. We didn't do it last year, but um, this year, new again is our um, calendar fundraiser so that's a huge boost for us in the business department and on top of that I think uh, like we said before um, having all these new people on the team is going to be a huge help for us in just coming up with new and creative ideas and solutions. I know our team relies so heavily on sponsorships and so heavily on fundraising but I know you've been working a lot with that do you kind of want to talk about that? Yeah we've had we've had a couple hiccups as far as sending out letters. Uh, okay. <laughs> Honestly, they've just been problems with uh, printing stuff and getting envelopes, as well as uh, I'm the only one in the business department right now, and I'm a little hesitant to uh, make other people do work for me. <laughs> um, so I've been trying to to get a lot of the envelopes mailed, uh, or filled and mailed by myself. Um, we are just about done with uh, mailing out envelopes, so that that's good. We're, once we get past that, I think I will shift towards um, grant writing for sure and other forms of sponsorship money um, maybe focusing on some larger uh, companies absolutely absolutely those grants can be the lifesaver when a team is having such trouble with sponsorships i know coming back from last year we referred to last year as like it didn't even happen it did happen a lot of amazing training happened we're thankful for the seniors that were on there last year that were able to like train in us newbies that came on but we really, we aren't resetting our team for this year. We're starting off from where we left off in Grand Forks in 2019. And we just, we want to just keep going. We just want to hit the ball running. And I think the entire team can feel it. Even those who weren't there at Grand Forks can feel it. Absolutely.
We are actually selling the Weather Guide calendar provided by the Freshwater Society as part of their fundraising program. Um, the calendars include a lot of key information on nature and phenology and, um, you know, astronomy and all sorts of subjects that are relevant to people in our area, especially. And it's all specific to Minnesota. Absolutely. Yep, that's another uh, big component of, the, of these calendars. And so we make a huge profit margin on these calendars. For every one that we sell, we make um, about $10. Uh, for only a twenty dollars calendar, so that's a fantastic return to compared to a lot of other fundraisers. So this is a really big opportunity for us, and we're trying to make the most of it. We're taking the calendars around to businesses and everything, and so we're trying to really get as many of these out there as we can. And I know parents and families who want to be involved in robotics, but they just don't know how. I know a lot of them love to donate with fundraising, and just to just to help support the team. It really just it does help out, and it gives the family members a oh, they helped out, like it really, it boosts their self-esteem a little bit. Yeah, I'd just like to say again, the calendars are the calendars are awesome. They, uh, the calendars themselves are interesting, even though, I feel like I'm saying a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff I'm interested in is not very interesting. Um, it's, they're, they're actually really interesting calendars and they give, they give us a lot of money. And Special <laughs> thanks to Thomas Coda for, um, for providing us with some excellent Christmas goodies. Yes, they are really good, surprisingly. Scrumptious. <laughs> Scrumptious. Well, Scrumptious. I think we're going to end it there. So thank you for listening to CIS FRC 4607 podcast. And thank you to Becker Lyons for being our sponsor for this week. See you next week.